So continuing on with the prep work on this, I found another couple of little low spots, one just there and one in here on the line. Um, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with the progress. It's all been blocked down and uh, I'm ready to start getting some 320. There's just one or two little spots I've got to block over this side. I'm waiting for this filler to dry as we speak, but I'll get some 320 on the orbital sander with the soft pad, soft pad on it. And um, I'll still be, I might even just give it all a wet check once I've got it all prepped up, get the prep sole, spray it over there, and then have a look down the side and see if I can't see any um, more ripples or, it's mainly um, sharp dents that we're looking for, just stuff that's really gonna catch the eye. It's just a straight car, it's not, not a show car or anything. But um, yeah, pretty happy with the progress. So I've got half of it all sanded down with 320. This whole side, I've got come around the front down here with 320 on the orbital. Did this guard and uh, I did the other side of the roof. I've just got a few more of these repairs. I'll get onto them and get some primer on it first and then I'll go around all these edges with 320 grit. Um, some people ask me, oh, why don't you use guide coats? Simple answer is at the moment I have to pay for it and it's not cheap and look, I find it not 100% necessary. It is just a guide coat. It's not the be all and end all. Like I can see that I'm really not, I don't know if that's showing up on the camera, but I can see here there's some deep scratches that are 180 scratches. So I know I need to uh, feather them out a bit more. But um, yeah, if you use your eyes and you got good lighting, which I do, um, you should be pretty fine. Uh, my business partner said to me yesterday morning, he goes, oh, because we've got this guy who's come in and done a bit of prep work with this before and a little bit of paint work. He goes, do you want him to come in? I said, mate, he's not touching this car. I've got sort of a procedure I like to do when I'm doing these big jobs. I know just about every single imperfection in it. I know every chip that's there. I know every ripple. I know every bit that needs attention and I'd rather do it all myself. So you've got this side all sanded down with the orbital. Um, just got to go over all the edges. I'm going to call it a day now. But um, first thing in the morning, go through all these edges, sand them down. Um, hopefully get a bit of colour on it tomorrow. That'll be great. Pretty happy with the progress. Making good time and it's coming along nice. Should look real good when it's done. So I've got all the edges sanded down with 320 grit. Went over all them, that took ages. Just uh, did all down the front here as well. The entire thing's done with 320 grit now. Inside all these window openings, I'll put all that filler in here that you can see. Um, sanded all these edges. And all down the back here. Pretty happy with the progress. Get it in the booth tonight and then uh, tomorrow morning come in mask and paint it. So next up, I'll be going over it with 500 grit orbital and then 500 grit softback sanding sponge. I've just had this beast uh, rock back up. I'm gonna have to finish this off before I go. I might even get on to making a video, but for an off the gun finish, that's held a really amazing gloss. Good customer, this guy. I know it's a bit off topic. We've got the mini there and everything, but um, didn't, try being a tight ass with the job happy to spend a bit of money to get the job right and that standox express premium clear is pretty amazing stuff a lot of the time when you put clear on that heavy it'll sort of dull off a bit over time but it's for an off the gun finish it's yeah awesome anyway back onto the cortina i'm gonna have to cover that up so i don't get dust all over it so as you can see, that's all the prep work done. I didn't focus so much on the prep work on this job. It was just a bit of a walk through the entire job. And what I did do to finish that prep work off was finish it all off with 500 grit, as I mentioned before, orbital and then by hand. I then gave the booth a really good sweep out, make sure there was no overspray left on the floor and then drop some water down there and spread that around so that when I'm painting any overspray will stick to the floor rather than hitting the floor and coming bouncing back up and landing in my paint job again and turning into dust. Then as you can see I've gone around all those edges and edge masked it so ready to get some plastic and throw that over the entire car. 
and my new spray gun just rocked up as I was masking this up, which is the Developers GPI. I've got it in the 1.4, 6 and 8, but I'll just be using the 1.4 for the clear over base on this car here. So I've got this thing all masked up. Pretty happy with how it's going. Next thing I'm going to do is wipe it down with wax and grease remover and put some seam sealer in a few spots. Um, but I've backmasked all the... Uh, wheel arches here I had to clean them up with a bit of a thinner's rag first and same with up underneath the seal panels but um all in all it's coming along nicely looking forward to getting some color on it and I'm going to be using this for the very first time my brand new Devilbus GPI straight out of the UK these things are made in the UK and they're not available in Australia yet from what I can tell it's looking like a nice gun really looking forward to giving it a go I think it's going to be the um, big competition of their other gun, which is the FLG5. But um, this one comes, you, it comes with 1.4 standard and you can get 1.6 and 1.8 fluid tip, which shares a uh, fluid needle as well. So um, I reckon that's a real good plus for the DIY guy. So someone that just wants to buy one gun, a good quality gun that will last, but um, you can do it for primer and base coat and clear. You could probably even use uh, acrylic, say with the 1.6, that might be a bit more suited to the 1.6. Um, but yeah, just an all-in-one quality gun that's gonna last a lifetime. Uh, and well, let's see how it goes. <laughs> Shouldn't be talking it up too much. I've never even used it. But um, it doesn't come with the regulator. It doesn't come with a, a gun spanner or a brush. But to me, that's not really a big deal. I've, I had an, uh, a regulator sitting around here. Um, it does actually have its own uh, regulator here, which I will just leave flat out and then adjust it from the gun regulator that I've put on. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to it. GP1 is the air cut. So it's all been uh, prep sold down, tack rags. I went over the entire thing twice with the tack rag. I'll probably just give it one more tack rag just to be sure that there's no uh, dust and stuff left on it. And I went around and there's just a couple of little spots that I put some seam sealer in up here. A um, couple of little spots in here where the seam was, but I removed that rust and stuff. And uh, same thing on this side, down here. There's a little bit of uh, cracked cracked panel or old seam sealer through there, so I redid that. But I'm um, happy with how it's going, and yeah, really can't wait to start splashing some colour on. This is the colour here, it's the Concept Nomix base coat, and uh, that's the colour code. So it's not a factory colour from uh, Cortina, from the Ford Cortina, but um, we just found a colour card, which is that, that's the reference number and it came up with this Fiat color, so. And again, we'll be using the HS55E 2K clear coat. One thing that I'm not really that crash hot on with this, it, the hardener, it just says hardener, it doesn't say fast, medium, or slow, so I've got a, got a good idea it's just medium, but whatever. So I thinned that base coat down just a little bit under the recommended one-to-one -one, and it actually still has very poor coverage. I mentioned in some previous videos when I was painting the bonnet and boot lid that if I leave a little bit of the thinners out, it's actually going to cover better because you're losing less of the body of the actual paint itself. Now it turns out I probably should have even left a little bit more out Reason I didn't is because on a respray, it's a real pain in the ass when you're going really slow because the uh, thicker the paint is, obviously, it's gonna take longer to come out of that gun. So I really didn't wanna to have to be going so slow. I just sort of put that touch more reducer in. And as you can see now, it's actually coming out at a nice rate. I'm not going too slow, but the coverage is pretty poor. I did end up getting just enough coverage after three coats though. So I mixed up two and a half liters to start off with. And after getting my second coat of base coat on the body here, I realized I wasn't gonna quite have enough paint to finish it off. So I went back out and mixed up another 500 mils. So it ended up being three liters all up 
reducing that up to around five and a half liters all up. So five and a half liters mixed. And then we got that clear coat kit, which is a seven and a half liter kit, which I turned out only using half of that because it's a HS clear. You don't tend to use as much as you do with the MS clear. But hey, look at this gun. This is the Devilvis GPI, first time using it, and it's going really well. Oh, I believe that this gun is exactly the same as the original GTI Pro. So not the Pro Lite um, or the Tecna Pro, the one that came before the Tecna Pro Lite. Um, they used to come out in 1.23 or 4, but the GPI has 1.46 or 8 which in my opinion is actually more versatile. Now the 1.6 to me is a bit of a in-between. It's like not quite color, but it's not quite primer, but you probably would use it for acrylics. And I did use it for acrylics and it worked extremely well. 1.4 is not quite enough. 1.8 is a little bit too much, which is why I would highly recommend this gun for a DIY guy who wants a one gun does it all, but wants a top quality gun who's probably at the point when they're you know, like, you know what, I've had enough of buying these cheapo guns, they last me 6 to 12 months, and then I've got to go get a new one. You go and buy one of these, you're actually getting, I believe, a $500 gun for about $300. And then all you do is buy the extra two fluid tips and you're off, you've got one gun that does it all. Now I did get given this gun from Spray Guns Direct. They decided they'd like to partner up with me. They said, all I want out of you is that you tell the people where you got the guns from. And that really put me at ease. They even said, look, they don't even need to know that you got them for free. But at the start, I didn't mention that I was getting them for free, but I'm at the point where I'm like, you know what? I've got nothing to gain by keeping anything from you guys. This is still my 100% honest opinion on this gun. If I was to have paid $300 for it, I would still speak exactly as highly of it as I do at the moment. It just got to the point where I'd started spending loads and loads of dollars on new guns for the sole purpose of reviewing. And these guys, Spray Guns Direct, gave me enough freedom that I was comfortable with taking guns off them. So they didn't want me to over advertise them all i asked for is that i mention where i got the guns from in the video at some point when i was actually pulling this gpi down i had a look at one of the needles in it and it actually said devilbus gti pro so it look i believe it is exactly the same gun as the gti pro they've just changed the color they've made a budget version of it and from what i hear it was actually to rival the flg5 which is also known as the sgk over here in australia you guys will probably know that I was extremely happy with that gun. That was just my workhorse. It was my base coat gun. It was my clear coat gun for inside panels. It was my direct gloss 2K color gun. And basically that gun was making too many sales. It is still a Devilbus gun, but it's made in Brazil. So the guys in uh, the UK are just like, you know what? We want to be selling UK guns for the entry level into the market. I personally think it's great what they've done. They've put a top quality gun out there for a reasonable price. There's nothing to stop you from just getting it in the 1.6 or 1.8 and maybe just say get the 1.8 and use it for a primer gun. Personally, I don't really want to spend over $200 on a gun I'm going to use just for primer, which is why I've always steered clear of the Devilbus PRI Pros and all the SRI Pros even. I don't like to spend over $200 on a minigun or a primer gun. That's just me personally, but for me, this gun here, it's not just a primer gun, it's also a color gun, so I can sort of justify spending that little bit extra money on it. Having this gun, I actually ended up selling my Air Guns at AZ-3 with the 1.8 mil on it. It was just like, well, how many guns do you need? And this is going to be my new primer slash color gun. Obviously, I'm gonna be very careful when I do use it for primer that it gets cleaned out 100% properly because primer obviously does dry a little bit quicker than at most other products and if you get a little bit of primer coming out of that gun into your two pack color or clear coat well yeah that's a bit of a disaster this is going to be my clear coat gun as well just for smaller jobs and insides but for really good jobs i still do like to run a dedicated clear gun which is going to still be my Devilbus gti pro although i will be clearing this job with this gun it's not like i'm going to be doing every single clear coat job with this gun and as far as the air caps go on this you can actually change any Devilbus GTI Pro air cap or Pro Light air cap and put it on this gun 
how well it's going to spray, I really can't guarantee because I did put the TE20 air cap off my Pro Lite and it just seemed that the fan was really small. So they do fit, but to be honest, I've got no real reason or need to go and start changing the air caps over on this gun. The air cap that it does come with, which is the GP1, which is labeled, to be honest, I reckon all they've done to save more research and development and manufacturing and engineering of a new air cap. I reckon they've just taken the T2 air cap. They may have made one or two minor adjustments to it, relabeled it, and then sold it as the GP1. So it is a conventional air cap. It's not like it's HVLP. It's not like it's LVLP either. So you'll need a reasonable compressor, but a DIY guy, I'm sure, with a half decent compressor will still be able to run it. To be honest, I'm actually still not a compressor expert. I've always worked in shops that have high powered compressors that never really struggle to keep up with a full workshop full of people and spray guns and air tools running at the same time. But Ours is a three piston, five horsepower, and that runs us just fine. If I did need to go and get myself a compressor, which I may do in the not too distant future, now I'm over here in Thailand, I would just go by size and price, to be honest. Anything over $1,500, I would imagine would be good enough for a single person use, and you'd probably be looking two and a half, even maybe plus, depending on how many people you're looking at running. You know, you, you'd probably struggle with an $800 compressor to do a full respray, I would imagine anyway, especially if you wanted two people, you know, one on the sander and then one uh, dusting stuff off you'd probably want to spend over $1,500. That is from my limited experience in looking at compressors though, but I might actually have to go and spend some time down at some of these shops and even make some videos so I can uh, help point you guys in the right direction in the future. But anyway, that just about wraps this video up. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Stay tuned for the next video and we'll continue on with the base coat stage. We might even get some clear coat on. I've definitely been having a little bit of fun making these videos. If you guys have enjoyed watching it, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you do go check out my website. I've been flat out categorizing every single one of my videos and putting them over there for you guys easily to access. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching and this has been another Gunman Production. Goodbye.